Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about the poetry of Li Bo, uh, whom I'm reading about in the Norton Anthology of World Literature, Volume B. Uh, so Li Bo was a poet of the Tang Dynasty, um, which was one of the sort of great renaissances of Chinese uh, literature, particularly poetry. Um, the the arts flourished during the Tang Dynasty, uh, which was uh, 618 to 907. Um, this was a, a great period for Chinese arts, and Li Bo was one of the, the leading figures of this poetic renaissance. And he's an interesting guy because, in a way, Li Bo is a kind of romantic, um, in, in the sense of people like uh, Wordsworth, Keats, um, Shelley, uh, etc., etc. He's very, very interested in nature. Um, a, a lot of the poems, at least that we get in this anthology, uh, which is a tiny fraction of his his total output, uh, but a lot of the poems are are very interested in nature. They're interested in this uh, in this sort of ethos of sucking the marrow from life and stuff like this. And and he writes a lot about drinking. He he writes about socializing, but he also writes about communing with nature in sometimes complex ways. So. There are a couple of poems that I think give us a more sort of almost simple, traditional, like communing with nature idea in this in this vein of um, Taoist philosophy or Buddhist philosophy, perhaps. So, for instance, this poem, and a lot of these are fairly short. A lot of these are quatrains. Um, sitting alone by Jingten Mountain, or Jingtang Mountain. The flocks of birds have flown high and away. A solitary cloud goes off calmly alone. We look at each other and never get bored. Just me and Jingting Mountain. So again, this idea of like communing with nature, of being at one with this natural space and finding maybe a centering, finding a, maybe a purpose, finding some sort of balance with nature, with the stability of nature, the solidity of nature, I think is, is one of the major threads of Lebo's uh, poetry. But it's complicated. Oh, it's complicated. Um, if we look at a poem like Question and Answer in the Mountains, we start to see a little bit of this complexity being developed. Uh, so this poem is, They ask me why I live in the green mountains. I smile and don't reply. My heart's at ease. Peach blossoms flow downstream, leaving no trace. And there are other earths and skies than these. Now this is a cool poem. Because we've got the first two lines. They ask me why I live in the green mountains. I smile and don't reply. My heart's at ease. That idea of like communing with nature, finding that balance, finding, centering yourself in nature. But, aha, uh -huh, the third line takes us in a slightly different direction. Peach blossoms flow down downstream, leaving no trace. The transitory nature of the world. The world is not eternal. The world is not stable. The world will change. And again, this is this is a very Taoist idea. Um, I mean, the the way that I I always think about Taoism is like a river. The way the Tao is moving, it it moves to its destination, and you can't resist it. You can struggle against it, but you will still be moved to the the destination of the way. Like, the way will take you, whether you resist it, whether you go with it, or whether you simply allow it to occur. And then again, we've got this fourth line of the quatrain, and there are other earths and skies than these. Again, 
the instability of nature, not in the sense of like chaos and violence and destruction and things like this, although Lebo does touch on those. Like his, his poem, South of the Walls We Fought, is an anti-war poem critical of um, the, the periodic warfare of the Tang Dynasty. But this is more of an existential poem question and answer in the mountains. This is more of an existential concern with the changing nature of existence. We might even think about it almost in terms of uh, the famous line from Hamlet. There's more that's, there, uh, there are more things on heaven and on earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. This is Lee Bo's answer to the question why he lives in the mountains, because there's more things in heaven and on earth that are dreamt of in the questioner's philosophy. Um, so it's very, it's good. But we've also, we've also got other poems where these ideas are developed more extensively. Um, the Sun Rises and Sets, for instance, this is a, a poem about change, but it's also a poem that comes closer to that idea of like chaos and, and anarchy not necessarily in a bad way from Li Bo's perspective. So this is the sun rises and sets. The sun comes up from its nook in the east and seems to rise from beneath the earth, passes on through heaven, sets once again in the western sea. And where, oh where, can its team of six dragons ever find any rest? Its daily beginnings and endings since ancient times never resting, and man is not made of its primal stuff. How can he linger beside it long? Plants feel no thanks for their flowering in spring's wind, nor do trees hate losing their leaves under autumn skies. Who wields the whip that drives along for four seasons of changes? The rise and the ending of all things is just the way things are. Zhihi, Zhihi, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's um, a goddess who drove the sun's carriage. Why must you always drown yourself in those wild and reckless waves? What power had Lu Yang? Uh, who, according to legend, the, I'm reading the footnote here, according to legend, the lord of uh, Lu Yang stopped the sun so he could continue to fight in combat. What power had Lu Yang that he halted your course by shaking his spear? This perverts the path of things, heirs from heaven's will, so many lies and deceits. I'll wrap this mighty mud ball of a world all up in a bag and be wild and free like chaos itself. I love those last few lines. Um, not only do I, do I hear Keats and Shelley and Wordsworth and Byron in those last three lines, I hear early career Kerouac, I hear Ginsburg, I hear, uh, Ferlinghetti. I'll wrap this mighty mud ball of a world all up in a bag and be wild and free like chaos itself. It's this great twist, again, on this poem that, through the first portion of it, is about natural cycles are stable. The sun rises and sets every day. This is the will of heaven. This is the Tao. This is the way of things. But it doesn't have to be. It can change. It can be free. Um, one more poem I want to read you. Drinking Alone with the Moon. Um, and again, this is another very cool, like, communing with nature, but a more active one that seems much more self-aware of communing with nature as an act that occurs within the self. So this is drinking alone with the moon. A pot of wine among the flowers. I drink alone, no friend with me. I raise my cup to invite the moon. He and my shadow and I make three. The moon does not know how to drink, my shadow mimes my capering, but I'll make merry with them both, and soon enough it will be spring. I sing, the moon moves to and fro, I dance, my shadow leaps and sways, still sober we exchange our joys, drunk and we'll go our separate ways. Let's pledge beyond human ties to be friends and meet where the silver river ends. So again, I think it's a cool poem, uh, not only because of this idea of the moon as a drinking companion. Um, 
Incidentally, according to the editors of the Norton Anthology, one theory about how Lebo died is that he was drunk and tried to embrace the moon reflected in a river, and so he drowned. And part of the reason that people give credence to this is because of this poem. But this idea of, like, drinking with the moon as a as your drinking companion and having it be having it become a friend is a very significant idea in terms of like how you interact with nature how how lee Bo or the the poet persona interacts with nature but there's also that acknowledgement of this is a relationship I'm building in here. This the moon doesn't the moon is not <laughs> responding to me. The moon is not engaging with me. I am seeing the moon, seeing my shadow as engaging with me. Um, and so I'm building this understanding of the world. And I, I think it's a really interesting idea. Because again, it, it complicates this approach to nature poetry and the importance of the natural world and finding balance in it. It raises these significant questions about how we as human beings do that.